All right, so this is the um, lecture over section 5.5 for what's going to become homework 27. So uh, we're going to learn today how to undo the uh, chain rule is the plan. First, though, I want to introduce you to some notation. So back in chapter 4, we learned about the uh, antiderivative of a function and the general antiderivative of a function, but I didn't introduce to you this notation. So the indefinite integral of a function, you just write down the integral symbol uh, of the function, but you don't put bounds on it. There are no bounds. This denotes the general antiderivative of little f. So for example, when you see bounds on this integral, this is a definite integral, and this you can interpret as a number. You're going to get a number. But when you see no bounds, then this is just asking for the antiderivative of x squared, which you know is x cubed over 3. It's the general antiderivative, so we throw on a plus c. And you want to watch that you don't forget the plus c. So all right, let me um, just r remind you so far. So we've been able to work out problems like maybe we want to find the uh, antiderivative of the sine of x. We did this already. We know that we're going to get minus cosine of x, d, uh, sorry, minus cosine of x plus c. And then you can check, you always can check this, the derivative of minus cosine of x is minus minus sine, which is just sine. That's the check that you want to do. So I want to show you how we can tackle more complicated problems uh, using what's called u substitution. And this is only the beginning of some integration techniques that you'll be learning, but it's the main technique we'll learn here in Calc 1. You'll learn several more in Calc 2 next semester. But for now, this is one of the most important, I would say. And this one, a lot of times, is going to be the easiest integration technique you can use. So you really want to try to master this one. So let me show you by example what we're going to do and uh, how to think about it. So here's a problem that we want to solve. We have the integral of 2x, the sine of x squared. Now this is a lot for you because I've just thrown new notation at you. And now I'm going to teach you something new here. But just pause and think about it. Uh, this is a definite integral, sorry, an indefinite integral. There are no bounds. And so all I'm asking you to do is find me an antiderivative of this function. But you should sort of panic a little bit because, gosh, there's a product here. There's function composition going on. Uh, oh my goodness. So a couple of little comments here. We are looking for function composition. When we're going to do u substitution, we're going to be looking for, let's say, look for function composition. Now, I have to tell you, it hides sometimes very, very well. So you might not always see it so clearly as you can here. Here, clearly, there's function composition going on. All right, look for function composition. And then we want to look for the inside function. So we want the, uh, we let's say it like this. We, we want to be able to, let me close that, want to be able to uh, factor out the derivative of the inside of the composition. That's the goal. You can't factor it out of the integral, but you can factor it to the side of your problem. All right, so let me show you what's happening. So here I've got this inside function x squared. And so I'm going to go ahead and call that u. I'm just going to write down u equals x squared. And I'm going to take the derivative, and I'm going to say, OK, so du dx is just 2x. I'm going to do something a little bit weird, though. Uh, we usually write du equals 2x dx. And you might be saying, yeah, but du dx, this isn't a fraction. You can't just move that over. Uh, actually, you, you can. There, there are reasons why that this, is work, th this works. I'm, I'm not going to get into it, but I just want you to write du equals the derivative and then dx. Okay, And our goal is to transform this integral entirely in terms of u. So if you look now, I've got my hands on a u. That's the inside function. And I know what the derivative of u is. There it is. And so watch what happens now. I can take this problem, and I can write this as the integral 
of the sine of u. And then I know that 2x dx is just du. So this becomes the sine of u du. And you might be thinking, well, what does that do? Well, I know what the antiderivative of the sine of u is. That's just minus cosine of u plus a constant. And now I, wait, I say, OK, but I had a problem in terms of x, not u. What do I do? Well, I'm going to plug in what u was. u is x squared. So this is minus cosine of x squared plus c. Now, surely it wasn't that easy. Let's see if this works. So let's check now. We're going to do a check. You can always check these. The derivative of minus cosine of x squared is, well, chain rule. It's going to be sine of x squared times the derivative of the inside times 2x, which is exactly what we had. So this technique works. Um, let's do one more example, and then we will uh, work out another. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll break up the video. But let's, let's squeeze one more in and work it out. I, I would really encourage you as we go along to try and pause the video on each problem and see if you can do it or at least get yourself stuck. That'll really help you learn the techniques rather than just watch them but not actually understand. So why don't you pause the video and try and figure out what U is for this one. So I'm going to show you a technique that I actually don't like but a lot of students do and so in an effort to make this easier for you guys I'm looking at this problem and I can see, hey, there's my inside function. That's a good candidate for u. So I'm going to set u equal to x to the fourth plus 2. I'm going to compute du is 4x cubed dx. I don't like doing this, but a lot of students like to solve for dx. And you can write dx as du over 4x cubed. And now you just make the substitution. You say, OK, so this is equal to the integral of x cubed cosine of u, and then dx is du over 4x cubed. And now it works out nicely because the x cubes cancel, and then you know you've got it. So you can write this as 1 quarter, pull the quarter all the way out of just cosine of u du. So the advantage is if you pick the right u, then the x's all fall out. I don't like it because I don't like leaving x's and u's in the same problem, but it's fine. Uh, a lot of people seem to prefer this, so um, we'll do it that way. Well, gosh, the antiderivative of cosine of u is just sine of u, so we get a quarter sine of u plus our constant c. That's our antiderivative. And so what was u? Well, u was what? x cubed, x to the fourth plus 2, so sine of x to the fourth plus 2 plus c. We can check this. We don't have to check these, but just to show you, if I take the derivative of 1 quarter sine of x to the fourth plus 2, I can know whether or not I've gotten this right. Uh, I'm going to get a quarter times cosine of x to the fourth plus 2 times the derivative of the inside, which is 4x cubed. The fours cancel, and you get exactly what we had up there. So this works. Uh, we did find our antiderivative. So one more time to be very clear here. Uh, when you're given a problem like this, this is an indefinite integral. Your answer is going to be a, a family of functions. You want to get that plus c on the end. And when you take the derivative of this, that should equal the inside function right here. And we are doing what's called u substitution. And we're looking for function composition, and we're able to undo it using sort of the backwards chain rule. So let's tackle another problem. Um, let's just keep working these out. Actually, I think I promised I'd break the video up. So we'll break the video up, and then we'll dive into another problem.